All right, guys, welcome. I've got a lavalier lapel microphone this time, so kind of weird. I keep looking for my microphone, but anyways, got a tutorial here for bevel joints. This is going to be the newest version with what I believe is at least the majority of the bugs worked out. It's a very specific thing that is trying to be achieved here, which is aligning mesh objects on faces with ray casting using the mouse position. Now it does have one little crux and I'll just show it. Like if I have this one here and I want to snap it, right? I would go to snap this and it's going to throw the rotation completely off because it's now looking for the other surface. Now we can isolate that a good bit by selecting the base, going ahead, running an operation for the first of two options, and we'll just close that for now, but you're selecting a base target or a base regardless. So if I want to join these two meshes, I can now join them. And instead of having an active modal and a bevel here like it used to be, there's nothing until you click vertex bevel, and now you have a bevel assigned right here. This would be a little bit of a cleaner way, and this would be your somewhat non-destructive approach, uh, but it's definitely destructive overall. Not a bad option. Now, let's go ahead and throw in another cylinder, and I'm just applying scale so this kind of matches up. And now you'll notice it does because it's not recognizing that as a separate mesh. So this now works. And that is a pretty simple but very powerful operation. You can perform that as many times as you like. And just so you know, there are far and few between on the limitations of what you can do and how you can join mesh and get bubbles. It's, it's very, very powerful. Now, for the first option, you can just keep joining. And if I jump into edge mode, you'll see that edge is going to be selected for you via the Python code I've got in here. And then, of course, you can add a vertex bevel uh, to that. And so now this kind of has two, uh, two bevels on it. So you could just keep this clean and say, hey, look, I'm, I'm done with this bevel. And you can go ahead and I will add in the future some more functionality so we don't stack a whole bunch of bevel modifiers but i want to give you the option to kind of keep them around so you can change things if you want it to be a chamfer or whatever and um, one of the cool things is you can bevel this again while you've got a bevel and clean that up and do stuff with it right so you're not really limited too much so that's all fine and good and uh, one thing I did notice is that the shading is just a little weird sometimes. So the 4.0, I'm sorry, the 4.2 and up, where you have that option to add the specialized bevel, that's going to clean that up. Um, you can also throw a weighted normal on. So if I wanted to go in and throw a weighted normal, I can do keep sharp. And let's just shade by angle. Not too bad. And I do have something on here. I think I've got cavity on. So yeah, we turn cavity off and it doesn't look as wonky. It looks normal. Now, for specialized bevels, and this is more experimental, but it works. So you have to add a V group in. So we're going to add a name. And we're going to say anything you want. It does not matter. And we're going to call this test group. Now, when you're pressing Y, this particular um, thing here is going to name the target for you. So if you pull that out and you press Y, it names it. Now, you have to select the, the base. And if by chance you're switching and you want to do this to a different object, you have to switch the base because it's using the target and the base in the code. So cool beans here is that you can go ahead and add a bevel joint and why would you want to add a specific different bevel well this is so you can transfer normals real nice and clean and the first operation does a job at that but this one i think does a little bit better so with the mesh kind of protruding because it kind of needs that you can press add bevel joint 
and then we can bring this out. And for the life of me, I've been trying to get this uh, particular bevel to not come with the normals flipped. And I even added a flip normals operator in here and it still does it sometimes. So I added a button. So you can just flip this button right here and then bring it in. Now this is going to transfer the normal data via a modifier that's already set up. So you're gonna get, of course, this set up with test group. It's all set up for you. The shading, hard normals is on you. May or may not need that, whatever. And if we come down here, you'll see test group is automatically loaded in for that object. We're also set um, to replace base corner data, custom normals, nearest face interpolated. And what this is going to do is it's going to nicely transfer the normals of that face into this mesh for material transfer. If you turn that off, you definitely don't have the normals of that face. Turn it on, you've got the normals of that face. This will be very valuable as you go in and you want to um, have materials and make it make sense and look good. Now, this will, this will um, pop in every time you do that, so you don't have to keep clicking it. You want to check the face orientation. You can do that if you're using Blender 4.1 or lower. You have an auto smooth right here. And the blend normals here, uh, I'm actually gonna have to take that button out because I made it automatic inside of this button. So no big deal. Take that button out, we don't really need it anymore. And yeah, and you can show cavity and that's it. It's not a complex add-on anymore. Um, I know the 4.2 LTS was, there's like a lot of stuff going on, but I want to make the add-on just a little bit simpler for everybody to use. There is a basic join operation. So I think technically you could apply these and then select these and click join. And it does have the normals still because we did the thing and it's got uh, weighted normals. You can apply all that and shade smooth by angle again because you kind of have to do that because it removes it to join it and then transfer those normals. But you see it's pretty clean all the way around. Not too bad. And so there you go. This is effectively the add-on and you can take any object you want with the first setup. So if I wanted to take a UV sphere and I'm just gonna snap it out here. And as you see, it snapped it in the correct direction, which is what I wanted. I can apply the scale so I can keep it in here. I'll use the first operation and this is still cube. So I don't have to change anything. I just have to have this object selected. Now, one thing to note, if you are joining this mesh, and I think we can do it here. If you're joining this mesh and it ends up right on a line, that's gonna be a little bit of an issue. So you may wanna adjust that just a touch. It's going to affect the bevel where it cuts it, and then your bevel may be hidden between two loop cuts and you won't even have it. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right, so let's join that. That's cool. And you can see what happens inside. It removes all the non-manifold. It's a very, very good operation. And there was a conflict between Ensolve and Box Cutter with this, but I didn't bother getting a hold of anybody there. So I just fixed my add-on according to what I saw the problems were from the people who picked up my add-on. And we can add our little vertex bevel here. And it does look like the shading is thrown off. Uh, by that object a touch, not a big deal. Um, you know what I think I will do is I might just add, I'll keep this button and allow an extra blend to be added when you don't add the bevel from here. And I might put it next to vertex bevel instead. I think that's what I'll do. So that same setup that's here, you will be able to pull that in up here as well and apply that. So that'll be cool. I'll change that. And if you guys have any needs, concerns, things that you run into with the add-on that you know, it's not, um, not working out for you, just hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'll shoot you the Discord link because it just never stays forever. The Discord link does not stick around for some reason, no matter what I do. Uh, but here we go. So one more time, I'm just gonna scale this bad boy down. 
press Y over here just so you can see that it is actually doing this the way we want. Um, here we go. So it's going to snap to the origin as well. Um, and in some cases, it will grab the face here. You don't have to have it protruded, but I've noticed it's a little bit of a variance there. I'm using Bounding Box and BVH Logic to try to find this face that it's touching. And so uh, a lot of the times it will actually bevel and it's very smooth, makes it very nice. And sometimes it does not. But I think for the most part, when you're using flat or hard surfaces like this, uh, you'll be able to do that. And for the more versatile option, the join mesh and then bevel, and that's more destructive, but this is non-destructive. If I didn't want this over here, I literally am just gonna bring it over here. You know, if I wanted to duplicate that, obviously we can run into a problem because it does, it's now looking for something else. You've got this object and now you got this one and it's looking for the loose objects. So you have a lot of objects in your scene. This option isn't gonna work as good, but if you're doing an operation um, where you need it to be like in one good spot, you can keep the bevel live up here. So if you guys wanna pick up the add-on, it is on Blender Market. I will drop the link in the comments in the description to watch it.